Welcome to Rackin' Mechanics, my name's Alan, I'm glad you're here. This is the first video in what's gonna be a series of videos on the Ancestral Tarot. This is based on the book by Nancy Hendrickson. This came out this year, and I had seen it um, around on the kind of the tarot verse, and a lot of people were kind of interested in it, and it's not something I've ever done before. I've never looked into like my ancestors or worked with ancestors or ancestor guides or spirit guides or any of that. I just kind of work with tarot, it's kind of straightforward. But when I heard her speak with um, Hester and <laughs> Holly and Esther on the Wildly Tarot podcast, I got really interested. So I got the audible version of the book and listened to it all the way through and thought that this is something that I want to engage with and to discover and work with and see, see, what, see what can happen. So I ended up getting the uh, Kindle version and the hardback version, which obviously I have here, I'll show you. And I'm gonna start working through the exercises and kind of and go on this investigation of ancestral work with the tarot. Now I have shot two videos when I talk about first, the deck that I'm gonna be using is I'm going to be using the Carrie Paris Kickstarter version of the Relative Tarot and the Companion Spirit Guide, uh, Spirit Oracle. Um, as, as the backup oracle. These are, um, the books obviously available now. I'll put the link in the description for Amazon. Um, it's not an affiliate link, so go get it wherever you're gonna go get it. And um, this deck is currently out of print because it is the Kickstarter edition. But her mass market edition is getting ready to come out by Wiser Books in just a couple of weeks from now. So if you're interested and you see the deck and you want something very similar to it, um, because it's not identical, the image, a lot of the cards look like they're the same, but it's kind of a re-envisioning, and it looks really cool. I'm probably going to get a copy. Um, you can. So, um, but I shot those videos, and then I was going to just launch right into the series, but then I realized that I'm going to be doing a lot from the book. I'm going to be looking at spreads and things like that, and so I wanted to do a little background work first, and so I contacted Nancy and said, hey, you know, I'm going to be doing this, I'm going to be working through your spreads work through your books are you okay with that you know because it's her intellectual property and then she actually directed me to her publisher and it took them a little while to get back to me and i've gotten their permission to actually kind of use this for my um for my youtube channel and i'm sure one thing they did is i went and actually looked at my channel saw that you know i have like less than 100 subscribers so i was like not a problem not, but anyway so that's that so i'm gonna be doing this so i'm looking forward to it one thing that's going to be interesting about these videos is they're going to be more vlog style than kind of instructive and kind of walkthrough videos that I've done in the past. So I'm looking forward to this because this is going to be really more of a chance for me just to kind of share who I am, what I discover about myself and my family and my ancestors with y'all as they work through this process. So if there's something you want to look for, look forward to, stick around. I am going to use the hashtag ancestral to, um, to kind of bind these all as a group. I'm also going to put a playlist on my channel so that where you can see my walkthroughs now of um, these decks and then this first video will, will be there as well. So that way you can kind of have one place where you can go and find all that work. So I hope you'll follow me along. Hope some of you might engage and think about doing this yourself and then use the hashtag so that we can follow along and like and sub subscribe and you know, worship. So that's kind of just my intro. What I'm gonna do first in this video is I'm gonna do the journey spread. And this is just kind of like an introduction to kind of spread what do you do to kind of like, where are you now um, kind of spread so that way as you and kind of as, as I engage in it, as I develop and as things happen, then we can kind of go back to it and kind of get an idea where it is. So, um, so we're gonna do that next. So stick around and we're gonna take a look at the spread. So here I've got my handy dandy chalkboard out where I've written out the spread positions. This is the journey spread, it is in a circle with one, first, second, third, fourth, fifth card, making the loop and then the two in the bottom for six and seven. First position is me now. Second position is the bridge I will take to meet my ancestors. Three, or what my ancestors think of me. What I think of my ancestors. What is the goal of my journey? What is the unexpected? And how will the ancestral tarot affect my life? That got a little sponged. So there you go. So I'm gonna move that around way so I can do the spread. So here we go. I do have, like I said, I have the uh, Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris that I am using. For, okay. First, me now. Three of Wands. This is a really interesting card because one thing I think um, my initial hit on this is that when I come into this work, 
I feel established. One thing when you, when I read the book, there's seemed to be a lot of emphasis on how to heal generational and ancestral issues and things like that. And I don't really have those. I mean, every family's got issues, but I mean, not, not, that's not why I'm not looking for big healing. So I really think I am coming from a position where I am looking to um, examine, um, explore, to be enterprising and see what happens. Yeah, good. Second is the bridge I will need to cross to meet my ancestors is the emperor. Here, I think that this is really a sense too that, um, that I'm gonna need to be structured. And that's one thing I love about the book. Uh, the book is gonna give me a great sense of a plan, steps to work, you know, kind of work the plan to kind of get there. So this is gonna be real interesting. I really think, and two, this is also a major card. Also, it's an Aries card, and I'm also an Aries, so that that is also really connecting there too. Also, too, um, because the Three of Wands also is one of my birth cards too. So that's really interesting there too. So I've seen a lot of astrological things. I don't. I I do use astrology astrology in my readings, but um, but this this seems really fortuitous and really interesting that's coming through. Okay, the third card is what do the ancestors think of me? Here is the Knight of Wands. Again, I've got another fire card. Super interesting. And um, I like I like this idea for what they think of me. One, because I'm, I'm starting off on a journey. I'm excited. I'm passionate. I want to explore what what where I come from. And I really like how he's looking at the Emperor. So looking at the founders. Two, um, so I think I think there's a sense there too that, that I, I really like that too. So that's cool. So I'm liking this lot of fire right now, but I, it's really cool. Next is uh, what? Uh, no, that's yeah. One of my ancestors. What do I think of my ancestors? Page of Pentacles, huh? And here I really think, huh? This is interesting. For me, the Page of Pentacles is always been a student, and I I think I want something kind of practical. I think that they are something that I can learn from and that I can explore to that also that I'm really new at. And so I really think that the newness of my um, adventure here is, is showing up in this card too. So but that is what I think of my ancestors, huh? That'd be a card worth kind of exploring too. Okay, uh, fifth is uh, what is the goal of my journey? Six of Pentacles, I like this because I like this as the idea of um, learning what I can give back and what where I fit kind of in everything. Not necessarily what I can take, but what I what I can contribute. Like what what is my role and how do I help and how do I contribute? Uh, six is what's unexpected. Five of Cups. So okay. <laughs> so I so I'm I'm all kind of bright and shiny until I get to this card. And uh, this is really interesting. And one thing that um, Nancy says in her book is that when you when you engage in this work, there can be a lot of things that the unexpected that there is some sorrow and that there is something something that can come forth and confront. So I I think I need to be open to that. I think this card is saying that if I only look for sunshine and rainbows, that's all I'll find. But I that I need to be more aware, fully of the emotional spectrum because this is the first water card too that I'm getting there because so that's something that I will need to be aware of. So that's. That's interesting. Okay. I, I, I get into some five of cups moments, I promise. And then uh, finally, how will the ancestral tarot affect my life? And here, I'm, what I'm taking is the book, but also too specifically is this whole process. And that card is the moon. Okay. Okay. Um, so, wow. So, so we've kind of ended here on a, kind of on a, um, on a big kind of watery question mark here. Um, because here the moon is also mysterious and wise. And um, I think what this is going to do is I think that I'm starting off kind of like thinking I, I know the viewpoint. I think that, um, you know, I, I do need the structure. Um, my ancestors see me and beginning this journey and I, I'm here to learn and to give back. But I also need to be aware of what it's going to cost and what grief I may find. And what... Um, and the mystery that, that, that I will engage in the mystery that is my family and my ancestry, which is very interesting. So, um, so that's that. Uh, two, one thing I want to do is, um, 
Nancy is a very big fan of using Oracle as um, as clarifiers. And so that's one reason I, I, I've picked the Spirit Oracle as the secondary deck that I'm going to use to um, to do clarifiers and things like that. And I always knew that whenever I did the spread, that I'm probably with most spreads, I'm probably going to pull both decks to look at it. And one thing I want to do is I want to kind of look at, see, how does this deck, um, the companion deck, amplify the means here? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put um, same card means and just put lay cards on top of it. Um, have, of course, I have already shuffled, so you don't care about them. Okay. Uh, first card is me now. Um, spirit is kindred. I, I like this a lot. Um, I really like this idea that, um, that I am like, it's a, it says the three of wands is a solitary card. It's about leadership and it's about being the person and moving forward and having the vision. But with the spirit, I really feel like this is them coming alongside and saying, Hey, you're not alone. We're together. We're the same. So that's, that's really cool. So that kind of comes out. Okay. Um, the emperor, um, what bridge do I need to cross to meet my ancestors? Elegance. I think this, I think this really does fit with the emperor too, um, because the emperor, you know, is structured. It's it's rigid. It's fine. but that that sense of elegance too is that um, that I'm getting that real sense of that. I kind of need to dress up for it, you know, not necessarily literally, because as I sit here in a t-shirt, um, but that that. When I take this formally, I need it to also take it seriously. And then I need to understand that this is a, an important process. So one thing I really see is that the Emperor and the Elegance do go together because of um, that sense of being serious. Like like you dress up and stand for the Emperor. When I do this, I need to be of serious mind and prepared and ready to go. Okay, the Nine of Wands. So what do, uh, right, the three is... What do my ancestors think of me? <laughs> Drama. Okay. <laughs> okay, maybe this maybe this is something to take a step back. Uh, too, one thing I love about this is I think, I did in my walkthrough, uh, I thought this guy is a little overly dramatic, and the Nine of Wands can be. But I think that this is saying, too, is that, um, that to, to not take it, to, I mean, be serious, but not too seriously, to, to, uh, to have fun with. I think, I think that's, that's, that's the spirit being cheeky. I just, I, I, love, it. I love it. Okay, <laughs> um, that's awesome. So what do I think of my ancestors? Coward. All right. Um, huh. Huh. This, um, obviously this would have to be a card about fear. And, and I, I don't know, is, it, is there something, is it something I'm worried about that I'm gonna hear or learn? Um, you know, and because this is something completely outside my realm of experience, you know, and this is, you know, something that, you know, you just, you know, I've never done before. And part of that is just the fear that, um, uh, well, I, I don't know, that's, so yeah, so I guess I've, I've got to look at what, what fear I have as I do this work and what, um, is that something that I need to address when I do this? Do I need to be more trusting and less fearful or less, um, I don't know. No. Okay. That's, that's, that's hits me. Okay. Uh, what's the goal of the journey? Hospitality. I think these really go together too. And that, um, okay. But yeah, I'm, I'm, st I'm still thrown off by the heart. Okay. Let's keep pushing through. We'll see where we're at. Okay. Finally, um, what is unexpected? The spirit oracle says the oracle. Huh. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I love the look on her face because she's obviously seen something unexpected. Um, but yeah, so I, th I think I think this 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 go together. Okay. And then finally, we're going to push through it and then we'll look at it all. And then how will in the ancestral tarot affect my life? Civil servant. Okay. All right. So this is a very interesting spread. Um, so, okay. I, th I think I'll... So up to here, I think I'm good. So here is where we really take a look at um, what's going on. So two, the, the coward is a fear card. So what I need to examine um, what what concerns um, 
maybe um, that I need to look at? Is there something that internally or personally that's holding me back from this work that, that I fear of what I'm going to learn? So that's something, I think this is just kind of a warning. Like I said, this is a intro um, spread. This is kind of just an, um, as kind of a remark. So I think this is all kind of warning. So that's definitely a thing um, as I journal about, I will kind of make, look and we'll, and we'll take a look at that. So I think these cards go together that I still want to, um, the goal is to be more in sync, to be more giving and comforting. So I think these go together because, I mean, that's just, okay. I think here, I think this, um, I think just the fact that the Oracle, I'm using an Oracle deck and a tarot deck to, to do this work. Um, I think I need to be aware of uh, what messages and I might be forced to look outside what I normally would see. So that's good. Okay, and then uh, Civil Servant, where is this gonna take me? So I think this is that, you know, that I I will need to continue to be giving and think of it more as what do I have to give and how can I help and learn um, than just take and receive. So, okay. So that's that. So, um, so that's the ring. We're going to see how it goes. Um, this is just going to be an interesting exercise. So I hope you like this. Um, follow along. If you are going to, um, follow, uh, to do these or if you have done these somewhere, uh, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, I'd love to follow and kind of see what you did. But thanks for watching. Um, this is episode one of Ancestral Tarot. Hope you liked it. Thanks.